Electoral College met in state capitals across the country. Uh, only one elector was a past presidential winner. Former President Bill Clinton received a standing ovation as he entered the state Senate chamber yesterday in Albany, New York. Standing alongside Governor Andrew Cuomo, the 42nd president cast his ballot for his wife of 41 years. Later tweeting, as an elector from my home state of New York, I've never been more proud to cast a vote than my vote today for Hillary Clinton. But Clinton had more to say about the election, speaking with a reporter outside the chamber. You know, I watched her work for two years. I watched her battle through that bogus email deal. He vindicated the end when Secretary Palsma came out. She fought through that. She fought through everything. And she prevailed against it all. But, you know, then at the end we had the Russians and the, and the FBI deal. But she couldn't prevail against that. And she did everything else and still won by 2.8 million. What? And some more recent uh, venting from the former president earlier this month. Bill Clinton spoke with the Record Review, a small weekly newspaper near the Clintons' home in Chappaqua, while the former president browsed at a local bookstore. In the comments of by Politico, Clinton acknowledged he received a phone call from Trump on the day after the election and that the Manhattan billionaire was strangely cordial, quote, like it was 15 years ago. Of the new president, Clinton said Trump doesn't know much, but one thing he does know is how to get angry white men to vote for him. He also addressed suspected Russian cyber attacks damaging his wife's candidacy, saying you would need to have a single digit IQ not to recognize what was going on. And he took a dig at Trump's win, asking landslide, I got something like 370 electoral votes. Correctly recalling his 1992 total, that was a 1992 total, that was a landslide. He also said we're living in a new world, a post-truth era where facts don't oh my matter. God. Joe. Oh my God. Oh my God. This coming, Mika, from the man who said it depends on what your definition of is mm -hmm. is. I, I would ask, has he no shame? But he proved decades ago that he didn't. And as Mark and I were saying earlier, if they would just get out of the way <clears throat> then and be gracious about this, there would be people carrying their water. But Harold Ford, for Bill Clinton, to say that Trump only knew how to get angry white men voting for him ignores a couple of facts. The first fact is that if Hillary Clinton would have carried Barack Obama's, uh, carried the same people that Barack Obama carried among these, quote, angry white men, she would have been elected. But they switched from Obama to Trump. And secondly, those angry white men that Bill Clinton is talking about are the same, quote, angry white men that got him elected president and were the same angry white men that Bill Clinton was complaining about for months that the Clintons weren't reaching. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the last person to criticize my, my dear pal. I can understand the frustration on his part, President Clinton. Uh, but there's no doubt a lot of what you're saying is true. There were signs in Michigan and Wisconsin and Ohio uh, and Pennsylvania uh, throughout the, the final weeks of the campaign that perhaps the economic message uh, from the Clinton campaign was not reaching and piercing and penetrating uh, big segments of, of the voting population. Uh, and again, again, I, I can I can appreciate the frustration on their parts, and I, I happen to agree in large part with whatever you and Mark might have been saying about. I think there should be a different tone, a different approach here uh, at the end. Uh, here, now that it's over, and the focus now should be on trying to ensure that this new president understands the enormity of weight he faces and the kind of challenges and questions his new team will face, including his Secretary of State designee, National Security Advisor, and others, as the front pages of all the national newspapers uh, demonstrate. So profoundly yeah. this and morning. And you know, Mika, it's yeah, and you know, Mika, it's just really it's it's again more of the same where the Democrats aren't facing the facts that the past eight years have been disastrous for them nationwide, not just in this election. They can blame Vladimir Putin for this election, and they can blame quote angry white men for this election, and they can do all of these other things if they want to. It's not going to help them move forward and figure out how do they win back the house in the next two to four years how do they not get wiped out in the senate in 2018 when all of these democrats and republican leaning states are up in 2018 
they have got to stop looking back and start, and I say this as a Republican, they've got to start looking forward. Now, that doesn't mean the investigations don't go forward. Right. These are serious issues. And that doesn't mean issues. they don't hold Republican. They need to go forward. And I think it needs to be very aggressive. And I've said repeatedly, it needs to be a two-year process. They need to get to the bottom of it. Them saying that, oh, we just lost because angry white men voted for Donald Trump ignores the fact that Barack Obama actually won a lot of those voters four and eight years ago. Yeah, and I think that they're, you know, again, blocking out an entire section of the country uh, if they if they look at things this way. I think these are important issues. I think they're all worthy points. I just wish we could hear a little bit of the other part that you're talking about as well, because then it would have more credibility and it would help move forward. I think there's some Democrats try trying to do some of these things. And, and like who? Well, like I, well, like I think, Tim Ryan? Well, I think you had Tim on. Right. Tim, I don't uh, think he was taken seriously. Well, he may not have been by some members of the Congress, right. Democrats in Congress, but clearly there's an audience of people across the country who are curious to know how yes. is it that we can drive defense spending to ensure that jobs come back to big parts of the Rust Belt. What how Democrats is, are speaking to that audience? Mick, Mick, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. The members of Congress and the Senate aren't doing it as much, and it's clear that the parties approach a lot of these things that was rebuked. The fact yeah. that members of the House, Democrats in the House, and I ran against Nancy Pelosi some 14 years ago because I believed the party was drifting in the wrong direction then. It's obvious that a lot of what's happening in the House amongst Democrats there, uh, they're oblivious in, lot, in large part to what's happening across the country. That doesn't mean we abandon whom we are, but we certainly have to rethink how we're approaching these issues. And Tim is certainly, I think, uh, one of those leaders. I think there are governors across the country. I think there's some <laughs> state senators and state reps who are looking at running for governor who have to be courageous and have to understand they need to step even outside of the rhetorical tent that some Democrats, including yeah. Washington Democrats, want to put them in. So there's some trying. We need a bigger effort. But is there a Trump. Clinton club, or what is it that, why can't it's leading... It's time, for the, time leading, for the Clintons to go home. Well, I mean, I... Yeah. I, I, I just, that's, a great, that's a great question, Mika. Is this about, is this loyalty to the Clintons? What, what, what is stopping the Democratic Party from doing what any organization would do? This would be the equivalent of a CEO coming out a uh, day before the earnings report saying this is going to be... One of our finest, you know, quarters on record, and then having the absolute worst uh, 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 on record, worst earnings report on record. This would be like a football team being 40-point favorites <clears throat> and then losing by 40 points. Right. And I, I mean, it, but it does. It even goes beyond <clears throat> that, Mark Halperin. This is not just the football team or the corporation. It's it's. It's the entire feeder system. The Democrats not only lost at the top, but they have been wiped out. There is no bench. They've lost 900 uh, legislative seats across the country. They've lost the Senate. They've lost 60 seats in the House. They're at the low point since 1928. And nobody in this blankety-blank party can look forward. You can do two things at once. You can say, we're going to get to the bottom of Vladimir Putin and... It's really, really bad yeah. that we not only ran the worst presidential campaign in modern history, and here's how we ran the worst one in history, but we never saw what happened in the Senate coming and what happened in the governorships coming. And there is, there is no reflection that people will tweet, oh, well, we're doing two things at once. No, as Mika said, who are the leaders of the Democratic Party that are actually saying we have let Democrats and America and the world down. Yeah, it takes money and ideas. It takes uh, personality. It takes an understanding of the media. It takes an understanding of what Donald Trump's potential is. But what it really takes is a ferocious desire to be someone who puts the party on your back and tries to fix it and change it and modernize it. And you take someone like Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or some of the Democratic. They're all interested in that project, but they're busy. They've all got other jobs. None of them see, as Bill Clinton did in 1990, and people, other people associated with the DLC then, none of them see this as their primary responsibility to convince the donors, to convince the members of Congress. One message, one effort, one modernization. I just don't see that person or that group right now. All right, we want to get to